This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, hashtag sponsored, playing on the early access event from Wizards of the Coast for Adventures in the Forgotten Realms video in the future explaining more about that. This is Artificial Yorian. I'm, what do you know, playing Yori in the Sky Noodle along with things you want to blink, but... Adventures in the Forgotten Realms has introduced many new cards that interact with the artifact theme, so I want to try them out. I've got four copies of Ingenious Smith. When this enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library, reveal an artifact, put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom. Sweet. Whenever one or more artifacts enter the battlefield under your control, put a counter on the Ingenious Smith. It triggers once a turn. That includes if the artifacts were blinked by Yorian, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Oswald Fiddlebender is one in a white for a 2-2 two -two that for a white and a tap sacrifices an artifact to Search your library for an artifact with a mana value equal plus one to that artifact's value. Use this only as a sorcery, and you put it onto the battlefield. So, for example, if I sacrifice a Witching Well, I can go fetch a Glass Casket. If I sacrifice a Potion of Healing, which is a two-mana artifact, I can go get a Maul of the Skyclaves or Midnight Clock. So, that's we're giving him a try. Potion of Healing is one in a white for an artifact that when it enters the battlefield draws a card. Nice. We can also sacrifice it for a white and a tap to gain three life, like a golden egg, but one less mana to sacrifice. Two copies of Vantress Gargoyle, because I'm trying to fill it out with more artifacts and a bit more artifact synergy, because we have Emery Lurker of the Lock in the deck as well. We have one Eye of Venka. Venza? Venka. Two legendary artifact. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and lose two life. Not great, but at the beginning of your upkeep, you may pay two. If you do, you draw a card and lose two life. So it can be this consistent card advantage source if you don't mind paying life, which I like to think that sometimes this deck doesn't need to. Then we have another new card, Priest of Ancient Lore. Two and a white for a 2-1. When it enters the battlefield, you gain a life and draw a card to make up some of the life loss. And we have three copies of Teleportation Circle. Three and a white. Enchantment. At the beginning of your end step, exile an artifact or creature, like Yorian, and return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So another way to get multiple blinks combined with Yorian, or to just blink and reset your caskets, portable holes, and various other artifacts that you might use. In the mana base, we do have some new cards. Three, Cave of the Frost dragon and three hall of the storm giants to try out the creature lands see how they do i expect this deck to have a lot to do with its mana so i don't expect to power these up too often we'll see if they actually make the cut in the final final decision so uh, i'm going to try to keep the intros brief i'm going to try to focus mainly on what they do and as far as like the strategy of the deck i think you get the idea we're going to try to blink these creatures with yorian and we're going to try to blink them with teleportation circle and see if that is good so um on that note since i only have a limited amount of time to record with this and i definitely only have a limited amount of voice we're going to dive in and if i need to make some changes during the video we'll show you the final video at the end if you want a spoiler you can probably download the deck list in the description since i export those at the end of the video it's probably the finalized version of the deck so let's dive in let the nonsense begin okay we are ready to rock with some tap lands and storm giants and i don't know how i'm supposed to curve out here I want to play the Hall of Storm Giants and the Witching Well. Maybe we just don't play the Floodplain. We can play it on turn two if we don't find anything, but now we have a great curve, so... Sorry, Floodplain. You're going to be chilling. Mm -hmm. I guess if we're not playing the Floodplain next turn, we may as well play the Cave of the Frost Dragon and have two creature lands ready to rumble. Boros. Call the Forge Master. Whenever another non token creature you control dies, if it was enchanted or equipped, return it to owner's hand. Creature tokens you control that are enchanted or equipped get plus one plus one. Alright, make sure we play those early so they're untapped. Play Potion of Healing. Game through, or just draw a card. We can sack it later to game three if we really want to. And let the artificial nonsense begin. Elite Spellbinder looking okay. Fighter class. What's fighter class? When it enters the battlefield, search your library for equipment. Reveal it and shuffle. They get a Sky Maul. Equip abilities you cast cost two less to activate. Whenever a creature you control attacks, up to one creature blocks this combat if able. My god, it's so much text, guys. I can't stress it. If it dies. Okay, if we exile something with the hole, it doesn't die. So basically we're covered. 
<laughs> I'm worn out just reading all the cards. This is intense. Alright. <laughs> Dancing sword. Uh, when it dies, you may this. The equip is only one. Plate armor. Equip. This ability costs one less for each other equipment you control. Oh my goodness. Bruner. The battle hammer. Uh, plus two plus O. Oh, you may pay zero rather than pay the equip costs. I don't know, man. I'm pretty sure what I'm supposed to do is take Bruner. And then what I do is I put the call in a portable hole. And then they don't have creatures for their equipment. I think that's the plan. Try to run them out of critters. It's rude, but it's the age-old strategy that wrecks equipment every time. They have to have creatures and equipment, or their equipment does nothing. Let's play the priest. Maybe we'll draw another untapped land. Ingenious smith. Okay. We get to dig for some new cards. Priest of Ancient Lore. Gain a life draw card. That sounds so nice to blink. I don't know if it's worth it for a 2-1 on 3 mana. I didn't play Cloud Conceer a lot, for example. But in the, in, the, in the spirit of new cards, rather than running Omen of the Sea, we're going to try Priest of the Forgotten Lore. Let's use the Ingenious Smith, see if we hit an artifact. Because that's honestly what I'm most curious, is how often can we activate this. And there we are whiffing. Feels good. But this does say whenever it enters the battlefield, which includes uh, whenever one or more artifacts enter the battlefield, put a counter on it. And that includes from Yorian. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of nonsense. That's a lot of Yorian blinking power. Fighter class. Plate armor. If they play another call, we can blink the hole, which... You know, makes them legend rule a call, and then we get the call that they keep. So it's like having a removal spell for future calls. Did you know that call forged the Sword of the Realms? That's it, right there. It's call working on the Sword of the Realms right there. Are you impressed? Don't act like you're not impressed. This says double strike. Okay. Airborne. Yorian. Torturing the Q one game at a time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 201, meet 225. Um, this hand's great, right? It's on the draw. We have interactive pieces. The Temple of Epiphany. And I am not sure I'm okay with how, how intense the land shake is. You to see what I'm saying? <laughs> Sprite Dragon. Alright, send the message. The Fiddlebender. Come here, buddy. Get in the box. The Fiddlebender's primary purpose is to turn, like, witching wells into glass caskets. Or other two-mana artifacts. And I don't know if that's worth it, but we're playing the card anyway. Okay, opponent's going to keep the pressure on from that standpoint of just sprite dragons. Sprite dragons all the way. Let's get rid of them. The teleportation circle's a nice draw. Exile an artifact or creature you control, return to the battlefield. Makes all of our ETB effects repeatable for free after the first turn that this survives. Brazen Borrower, bounce the casket, of course. Shock, kill the apparition. Fun. Well, let's go, gamer. So we want to have something on the board before we land the circle. So I'm thinking I double spell with my own fiddle bender and I use casket. And I'll use casket here to take out the token so it's empty, so I can swap it over to the dragon next turn. And playing the fiddle bender, because I have an empty casket, they might go out of their way to kill or bounce this because they're afraid of me turning the casket into a better artifact. But really I just plan to blink the casket. 
But we'll see. Who knows? There's other fun stuff you can do. They say go ahead. So we can turn this into a Sky Mall. It's only as a sorcery? That sucks. <laughs> we can turn it into a Sky Mall or a Midnight Clock. But I think we'd rather have the circle on the board, but they held up mana, which scares me. Let's go for the owl and see if it resolves. If they counter it, maybe we turn this into a sky mall? I don't know. Portable hole. Awesome. It's a really good find there. Get back in the box, you sprite dragon. Get in there. All right, let's go bend some fiddles by attacking the opponent. <laughs> Their brazen borrower can't block it. We probably don't want to trade the Arcanist out with the borrower when it, it's so juicy of a teleportation circle target sometimes. Down to 11, though. We've got to keep an eye on the life total. I say go. Turn this into a clock or turn it into a sky mall. Or use it to get the borrower. I, it depends on if the teleportation circle resolves. Do you resolve? Yeah. All right. They might, there might be another Borrower coming down. We have to be mindful of that. So maybe we save the Owl, attack with the Fiddlebender. Bounce. Okay. But they didn't get to deploy their Borrower, so now we can probably take this trade if they'll still make it. Gotta stay alive. Demilic is here. Can't wait to build with this card. That animation. Hey, look at this big freaky thing's head. <laughs> Effective. Um, hmm. Do we go for the circle again? Probably. The Orient's also really good, but we can double spell here. So let's go for the Priest of Ancient Lore. That resolves easy. Nice and easy. Let's go for the circle. No attacks. Let's blink the priest. Another life, another card. And see what we can do about Demilic here. Do we just have to take a hit? I think we might. That or we can block with the Fiddlebender. They get the free shock. They're gonna shock... Hmm. They shock the Fiddlebender. Rude. All right, no blocks then. This priest is gonna get it back for us. I know it will. Oh no! That is another demi lick from what I saw, and there it is, two four threes. This looks like a job for Yorian. Let's get some scry action. Another circle and an emery. It's pretty cool stuff. Hard to say no. Yorian. Glass casket doesn't hit. Neither does the portable hole. So we'll just flicker these two. And we want to bring them back first. And we want to target the Yorian. It's important to turn on that auto th that auto triggering stuff and get it right when this starts to go. All right, so flicker the Yorian, bring it back. Exile the priest. Exile this. We can exile the circle if we want to. Let's also exile the casket in case they play something it can hit. See if the opponent can beat the Yorian on the battlefield. Is it a third brazen borrower? Are we unable to keep Yorian on the field? Let's find out. 
opponent doesn't have any more spells in the graveyard to use, but they're going to shock here, then they're going to attack, they're going to bring back the other shock. If they have one more way to two to face, they win. Let's see if they've got it. Down to two. Recast. Doesn't have the spells, right? Doesn't have the spells. Oh my goodness. Three of them. There's too many of them. Doesn't matter. Draw first. Up to three. Lands, no. Flying through the deck, but somehow not getting the job done. Emery on board. Second Yorian. How many triggers can we create? Second teleportation circle, but we can't remove these Demilix. Life is hard, man. All right. Let's attack. Give four in the air. Down to 12. Move to end step. Trigger, trigger. Target here. And target here should work. We should be able to get the card, the life, and then still flicker it with Yorian. Elite. You, these, might as well do the circles as well. Don't want to crack the passage. We know that we have lands on the bottom, cards we don't want to draw. So we want those to stay right where they are. How about the graveyard with Emery? We've got a Witching Well and an Arcanist Owl to recast, which is pretty good. But I think I'm perfectly happy to chump with the Emery here. Sprite Dragon. Spells in Graveyard, just one. Everybody's coming in. We gotta recast that Expressive Iteration. But they have to pay for it. It's, it's not something you get for free. So we have to block the two Demilix to survive. Oh, this is close. This is so close. Yeah, put a land on the side. Good. Actually, I'm about to scry anyway. So with this ability, I should crack the passage because I can sack the Witching Well to scry two or to draw two on end step, which could be important. And we want to get the scry. We don't want to undo the scry if we like the cards. All right. So the scry at the beginning. Yes. The casket that hits the sprite dragon. We get the scry. There's a gargoyle. Can it block? What do we have to do? We have to get to four cards in hand. I think I can do it. I think I can do that. All right, gain one life draw. Witching well draw. Finally, something that can keep blocking these Demilix. Dance of the Mance. Dance of the Mance. It's a pretty good card. Yeah, it's got to be the best play we can make, right? It doesn't have to be, though. Let's get the Spellbinder. They might just have a burn spell in hand. Making it cost more could be the best. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to make that cost a little more. A little bit more. They say good game. All right, out. Ooh, that was close. Those Demilix really put up a fight. Okay, another good opening curve. Lots of artifacts and Genius Smith. We'll see what happens. Den of the Bugbear. It's a showdown. Um, Yeah, let's play this first and we'll get the well out later.
You know what I want to do? I want to add red and run Galzeth Prismari, but then I also need instants to cast. I think it'll become clear pretty soon which instance we want. I feel like I'm supposed to put that in a hole right away or it's going to be too much damage. We have to play this, so let's portable hole. And let's Witching Well. We're looking for more removal spells because we don't have any more after the hole. Alright, if we put this here, we'll hit the Sky Maul with the Smith if we play it next turn, but I'm not sure I want to. So I'm going to take the land. Maybe the Sky Maul is just really hard for them to deal with. But no, let's put it away. I don't know about that. Maybe it's right to keep the Sky Maul and make sure I have a hit for the Smith. Okay, the Sprite Dragon's coming in hot. Let's go for the lore, try to set up our Yorian nonsense. A little bit of life, a little bit of card. Uh-oh. That's looking really good. Although, probably still can't Demi-Lick this turn with the Den of the Bugbear in play. So next turn we can Smith Potion of Healing, and then have a really nice Yorian the next turn. But we're going to take a lot of damage over that time, probably like 7 to 10 damage. Very scary. All right, priest is the priest is dead. No more priest. Let's shuffle the sky mall back in because we need the hits. Glass casket would be nice. No, nope. we get a uh, witching well, but we'll play potion of healing, which will get triggered and draw. And there's a gargoyle. That can be a nice blocker. But we need a nut. I guess we need to blink this hole and give the opponent back their baby dragon and take the bigger dragon. Okay, shock as well. They're going after my creatures now. And they've got the mana for the demi lick. The 4 3 is on the field. We're down to 9. So it's Yorian's time. They get back Baby Dragon. We'll take Adult Sprite Dragon. Like that's a card name or something. Uh, do not want another Potion of Healing right now. But we'll take another Yorian. We might have to do this a few times. Alright, are you out of spells? The demi does attack and cast a spell. Okay, and there's an opt. I'm not cozy. This is not comfortable. Yeah, everybody attacks because the demi can recast the shock. Let's see, the shock can target the Yorian, or it can go face. They go face. And we have to block the demi and we're down to one. Oh my lord. And that is... that's the draw, man. <laughs> Three sprite dragons. Lots of burn. And we are dead. A Dance of the Mance is in hand. We got Casket, Binder, Teleportation Circle on the play. Let's roll. Don't know about the dance. Maybe dance needs to go. Maybe it's a bit of extra greed. Maybe getting to like start blinking Yorian with Circle is more than enough to win. But the dance can get Circles back if they get killed. I don't know. I guess it depends. We'll see how the meta breaks down. Do we actually need Dance of the Mance in our life? Oh, it's taking a, taking a breather. Let's go ahead and wake the dragon, get the beholder to shoot at us. You know, fun stuff like that. Forsworn Paladin. So, one in a black, pay a life to create a treasure token. Pretty cool. And then two in a black, plus two plus O till end of turn. If treasure mana was spent, uh, creatures gain death touch. So, do we want to wrap that up? I kind of think we do. Can't be too bad to take it off their hands. The treasure deck really likes those cards. 
And it's our only uh, box. So I think we want it around. There's the Triumphant Adventurer. So that goes into dungeons every time it attacks. That'll be annoying. Speaking of annoying, let's get in their hand. Oh, it is knights. Spells your opponent's cast during your turn cost one more. Don't think we need to take that. The Stormfist Crusader looks like a pain, so does this Fervent Champion. Take the most expensive card when you're not sure. Make it harder to cast. All right, they get their venture. Let's see if it's the one where we lose life. I'm guessing it'll be the aggressive version of the venture. And you see all the costs of the non-creatures change because it's their turn with the paladin class. That won't stick till my turn. But if I were playing counter magic, I'd be annoyed. Oh, this is not the time to draw this. Oof. Big oofs. All right, I think my play is to get the teleportation circle onto the battlefield here. And we can either blink the Spellbinder and go after that card in their hand. But they have the Crusader to play next turn anyway. They also have this to activate, so I don't know if that's very good. If we blink this and take their Adventurer, it slows them down a good amount, I think. Because it's just a 1-1. Take three, fall to 14. That's gonna enter the battlefield tapped, so our play is I and Fiddlebender. Man, I really don't wanna lose life in this particular matchup, so this is really unfortunate one of to draw. We can play this, but it can't block. It's gonna be a tough road in this one. Cards are not quite there, but I guess we'll hold back. We blink the casket and give them this. We can take their Stormfist Crusader. I think I just blink the Spellbinder though, which means I should have attacked with it, so I missed three damage. We'll see if that comes back. We'll t Good hit. Good hit. We take the Ember Cleave. So if they have five, six, seven, eight, they can still Ember Cleave with an untapped land. Okay. Uh, so dying to Ember Cleave is still a thing. And these cards do not look good at all. They're probably coming straight out of the deck. I haven't activated this yet, even when I've had the opportunity to. And the dance I haven't cast, even when I had the opportunity to. So all of those need to come out. They don't go for the Embercleave. Did I miss math? I don't think I miss math. Maybe they just wanted to kill me in their, what they perceive as a more classy way. Don't need to lose any more life, thank you. But apparently I don't draw anything good anyway. Alright. We learned plenty of cards that need to get removed from the deck and never come back. It seems like a good hand. We got the Elites. Got a new addition after making some adjustments and cutting some of the cards that didn't really do anything. They were cool, but like Vantress Gargoyle didn't really belong. And the Fiddlebender had to go, because I just never activated it, even when I could. Land is good. Barbarian class. We got a dice roller over here. And they are leveling it up to number two, which means whenever they roll a dice, a creature gets plus two, plus oh, and menace till end of turn. That's a heavy hitter. I think we'll just take that off the field. I know, the no fun gang has arrived. Classic CGB. Blue mana. And there's a Den of the Bugabear. Let's see what's going on in this hand. I want to know.
All right, Prismari Command says no more hole. They get the class back. And we see the Storm's Wrath and the Delina Wild Mage. I guess we have interaction for this, but it's not for a few turns. So I'm going to take the Wild Mage off the battlefield and leave the Storm's Wrath. Because I think we can play around it fine. Our creatures gain value when they enter the battlefield. So if our opponent wants to cast the Storm's Wrath, that's okay. Field of Ruin for the Den. Nice. We're going to need Field of Ruin reprinted with all these creature lands. Just saying. You must have drawn something else worth playing or you would have activated the class. So, yep, another Prismari command will do. So, we can go for the Owl. Or we can hit the Storm's Wrath before their hand is empty. Let's hit the Storm's Wrath. Courtesy crack on our turn so that it doesn't hold up priority and they can do whatever they want. And they go straight for the wild mage. Okay. Guess we'll keep slow rolling the field of ruin. Play the Elspeth Conqueror's death. Get the wild mage. Assault of the Spellbinder. You have another one. Nice. All right, so attack for three. Play the priest. Oh, I tapped wrong and then got bailed out. Did you see the auto tapper? It didn't leave me with mana for the apparition. And then it bailed me out with a casket. That doesn't hit this. No, I thought it was a three mana play. It's not. Okay, so how's this work? When it attacks, choose a creature. Tapped and attacking, it's not legendary. Exile this at end of combat. So they get two rolls. Let's see how this works out. Uh, okay. Okay. Menace, not menace. We'll take... Oh, should have blocked. Should have blocked. But I guess I have a Spellbinder coming back anyway. Loose. I'm playing it really loose here because my opponent's on a pretty crafty deck. And I just... I feel kind of bad that I'm not playing many new cards, but... It's magic, is what it is. Alright, there's a Prismari Command over there. Let's go ahead and hit the Wild Mage. By the Yorian. Attack with the creatures. Sounds like Scoopy's time, though, since they sent the GG. Yeah, Prismari Command has had good targets, but it hasn't been enough to do all the heavy lifting. All right, can we remove the 4-4? Four four? Let's see if we can find a casket here to finish the job. All right, so no finished job just yet. Opponent falls to two. I think they're going to Storm's Wrath anyway, so we may as well block. Ingenious Smith, nice. Let's get the Smith and the Teleportation Circle onto the battlefield. Get that cooking. We get another portable hole. We get the Circle, which we can flicker the potion. We get to play the hole and take the Barbarian class, which is kind of rude, but it works. We'll flicker the potion because it draws a card for sure, whereas the smith doesn't necessarily hit. And there's no particular artifact I need. Treasure chest. We're trying to roll that dice. If they hadn't scooped, I would have let them have another turn to roll them. But maybe they don't want that anyway. I understand. I understand. The blinking can get annoying. 65 is back to roll some dice. And they're stuck with me again. This time, let's see... I'm going to try to look for opportunities to have them do their thing. Maybe if I dirtle enough. We want to play this early. And this can be land four. Let's just play it now. 
We might draw another one of these uh, creature lands off the top. A foretell card. Hmm. All right, Smith. Let's see if you can find an artifact. Portable hole, Arcanist Owl. Grab the owl. There aren't many in the deck, and I don't see anything to put in the hole just yet. There's a treasure chest, which, four mana, sacrifice, roll a d20. You can either create five treasure tokens, gain three life, and draw three cards, or some critical hits, one way or another. Play the priest, see what the treasure chest holds. There's a Pixie Guide, which means you grant an advantage, which gives us double rolls. Let's Arcanist Owl and grow the Smith. See if we can also get another hit. Teleportation Circle. Grab the new card. Sounds fun. I mean, just blinking these right now sounds awesome. Is it treasure chest time? This is instant speed, right? Yep. But we're gonna do it now. And the 12. Gain three life, draw three cards. All right, up to 22. Full grip. For me, I think we're just going to Yorian. Once we play the circle and start Yorian on Yorian, it gets pretty extreme. Yorian! Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, let's see what we come up with. Um, artifact or enchantment. I'll guess I'll take more clocks. I don't know. Clocks are cooler. Ah, whatever. We'll take the omen. Casket. And land. Nice. What do we discard? I'm going to discard this priest. I have to discard two cards. Um can also discard the Apparition. Both things we could get back with an ECD. Whew, we are causing trouble. We are causing trouble. Midnight Clock into Circle potentially next turn if we want to keep moving our mana up. Glass Casket. All right, the Wild Mage is here, and we've seen before. This is kind of the backbone theme of the deck. We could remove it, but what fun is that? Let's see our opponent do... See if they can do something cool. Roar! Yep, the more they hang in the game, the more they might let us do our thing. Rude, I know. <laughs> Alright, you, 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 you. Liquor. Let's see what coin flips over here can do. Ooh, some removal spells. To clear the way. A pair of 18s. You know, now I'm going to have to start a new, like, the D20 is fine. Six and nine. Nice. <laughs> All right. Do you like RNG? We've got RNG, baby. But it wasn't lethal. So that's... how much damage is that? Seven? They're at nine? Oop! Sky Maul should do it. Sky Maul should do it. Let's see if they have interaction for it. I 
they have a removal spell, they'd use it there anyway. Should be able to hit just about anything. Well, do you have a surprise? Can you stop me? Stop me. Fire Prophecy. Alright, that works. That does work. Let's see if they can pull it off. Alright, so we have a tap land here. We have a teleportation circle on end step. We also have the omen. And we have a potion of healing that we can put down that draws us a card and can gain us three life. I think the omen's better. Let's move to end step. Let's target the arcanist owl. We might have to discard, so let's be mindful of what we choose. I mean, caskets are fun. Ain't got time for that. Okay. Let's see if Delinda can win the game with all that RNG power. Roll them. 14 it is. And there's some menace. Menace is good. Does that mean... Oh no, that's it. Okay. No more tricky extra rolls. Saw it coming. Okay. Still don't think it's good enough. Okay. I think that'll do it. If they have a trick, let's let them use it. Stevens. The smith comes out the victor. Hmm, a little bit slow, but we'll give it a try. We also might not have double white for the app, but we'll see. Omen helps us find it, potentially. Hmm, are we rogues? Let's find out. Uh -huh. Cool. They've been sent to test me. They've been sent to test my tolerance. Let's go for the board presence. We might also find por uh, a cheap removal spell. I think it's worth looking for like portable hole or glass casket there. Because it makes a big difference. Uh, we got a Heartless Act on uh, the Ingenious Smith, so that's nice. And no attack from the Thieves' Guild Enforcer, because this has to attack alone to hit the dungeon. Can't be blocked, though. So let's see, what dungeon do you want to do? Portal, gain one life. The long dungeon. Um, I don't know. I think since Priest of Forgotten Lore can trade with Enforcer, we want to go after the Malison. More removal? They did snap off that Heartless Act fast. Nope. Not gonna play it. Okay. If we go for the circle, and the opponent just does like, kills this, then our circle did nothing and we take a beating. So I think I'm supposed to either go for the priest or go for the omens. Let's go for the priest. Let's go for board presence. I should have left a white open for a portable hole. That's something I have to get used to. No attacks. I'm expecting ambush nonsense. Drown the apparition. No blocks. Now we have a casket for that. Play around Mystical Dispute. Drown in the lock on the casket. Okay. Opponent didn't like that. And now they have a 3-2. So, we can play one of these omens or buy this Yorian. Let's buy the Yorian. They're running low on cards. Uh, 
and still trying to hang on to the Enforcer. There's eight cards in Graveyard, but they don't have double blue for Into the Story. Let's go for the Circle. They might just remove the Priest here and make our Circle really bad, but then we play Omen, and then hopefully Yorian resolves and sticks, so we get to Omen again. Thief doesn't kill it. But now they'll be eager to trade for it. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. This is getting really scary. <laughs> Big surprise. It's into the story. Big surprises. Vorpal Sword. <laughs> Eight mana? They've got six. Not insane that they might figure this out, but they're not being that aggressive. They're holding back that Enforcer, which I wouldn't do. I, My Enforcer would get in there, but maybe they're trying to give me a chance. All right, we need some cards like Apparition for sure. Another Yorian. Maybe they'll... You know, we don't have to trade. We can do this. We can go, boom, exile you, attack. Why did I not, why did I not play this guy, Maul? What is the matter with me? I guess I'm playing an omen. Uh, all right, rough day. Give me, give me a minute while I figure out how to stop being an idiot. Also, should have kept that land. Uh, I think I bottomed this land. Big mistake. Could have had a land drop this turn. Rogue class. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of that player's library face down. You may look at it. Um, creatures you control have menace. And on level four, you can spend mana as though it were mana of any color to play those cards. Okay. Not that scary yet, to be honest. Okay, so Exile, Exile. It does give a little extra mill effect, but we're an 80-card deck, so... It's a lot harder for the opponent to mill us. It didn't equip this sword, either. Maybe they are planning to level this up. Okay, they equip the sword to threaten the lethal next turn. They've got another one. Some portable hole, which should be nice. Seven mana. What do we do with it? How do we dispatch these roguey rogues? I think I'm going to flicker the Skyclave Apparition, exile the Soaring Thought Thief for sure. Then we can play Yorian, reset the board. What else can we play? We can play another Omen, or we can play a two-drop that we find. This is, uh, this is scary. Yorian. I think I stacked that wrong. Oh well. I, I, I moved too quickly. I was supposed to flip those. Potion of Healing and another Omen are not really what I need. Okay. A little bit of life there. Drop off one of the Spellbinders. Keep a lot of diversity available as well as the land drop. And let's see what they're going to play here once... Okay, they're going to give these Menace. Requires some double blocking on my part. They all advance to level 3, so they can cast these now without paying the mana cost. 
or is it they can play them? You may play them, so they get a land. The land they need to make Vopal Sword lethal, but they can't equip it as well. We have our land drop, so let's keep this. Another Yorion. Where's those portable holes, man? We can play the smith and try to find it. I also want to get rid of this. Skyclave Apparition can do it. I think if I get rid of this, they can't use it anymore. Let's go after the hand. Just a land, okay. Play the smith. Still not finding it. Alright, a couple of whiffs. Rough turn, rough turn. Alright, end step. Target here. This gives the opponent another token, which is not particularly good. They're going to have plenty of menace, and they're going to be able to play some spells. This hits their hand again, but we need to keep some blockers, right? So maybe we're supposed to just leave these. I'll leave the Spellbinder, and then we have the Omen as well. Did not exile the Omens. Ugh, I'm definitely tired. <laughs> uh, bear with me, though. We don't want to. We don't want to blow it out too bad. Okay. Uh, are they scooping? Let's see. They have menace with Vorpal Sword, but it's not good enough. And that's the scoops. I need to go eat a lunch or something so I can uh, remember my plays a little better. And we are back for the post-game wrap. And again, this will need to be tested in a more competitive environment to see how viable it truly is. The win rates in release events don't really matter very much. But I will say that the package, I guess, of Ingenious Smith, Portable Hole, Glass Casket, and then uh, some of these other kind of value cards like Potion of Healing, uh, Priest of Ancient Lore. Those are very, very good with Teleportation Circle. And of course, Teleportation Circle is very, very good with Yorian. The Arcanist Owl also impressed me quite a bit, and I thought it was very good. And it's not too surprising that when we re replaced some of the more sketchy new cards, like uh, the Fiddlebender, with cards like Omen of the Sea, the deck got a lot more consistent. It does seem, in a way, it seems like I have too much value and I need a little bit more removal and board impact. So somewhere in here you should trade some of the value cards. Maybe it is Priest of Ancient Lore, to be honest. And you should just run cards that either can counter the opponent's spells or interact with their board, blow up battlefields, keep them from killing you a little bit better than Priest of Ancient Lore does. And once you do that, I think you have a pretty powerful Blink deck. Maybe Dranith Magistrate is still the way to go as combining it with Spellbind binder and teleportation circle is a really nasty curve so yeah i think we should try that i think you should cut the ancient lore for the dranith magistrate because i think dranith into spellbinder into circle can just mean that a deck like ultimatum just never gets to play its binding the old gods or the rest of its top end ever and that's pretty cool <laughs> And speaking of cool, you stayed till the end. You checked out this new video. Thank you for that. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I'll see you in the next video. You're cool. <laughs>